Well, Julian Assange has been in and out of court for the better part of five years, even longer than that. He's made several attempts to avoid being extradited to the United States. Now, the WikiLeaks founder has one last avenue of appeal in the UK. If the High Court in London grants his appeal, he can plead his case in court. If it's rejected, he has run out of legal options in the country where he has long been imprisoned. There is growing cross-party support in Australia for Assange to be released, but will this pressure be enough? Joining me live is his legal counsel, a uh, part of his legal counsel, to Julian Assange, Jennifer Robertson. Jen, thanks so much. We know it's late in London, but we appreciate your time. Um, how big is tomorrow for Julian Assange? As you point out, Laura, this is his last appeal in the United Kingdom. If we're refused permission to appeal this week, that's it. We are, of course, prepared for the worst, that if he is unsuccessful this week, that uh, there will be an order for his extradition to the United States. And our final avenue for appeal is to the European Court of Human Rights. Now, that's not a given. It's an exceptional measure to request provisional measures to stop him from being extradited. Uh, and it's not guaranteed. So, you know, it's a very dangerous situation for him. So how does this court um, case play out tomorrow? Is there an immediate... Um, decision or might there be some weeks of deliberation? We'll be in court for the next two days hearing both our arguments about on why we should be able to appeal in this country and the US's arguments against and then the court could issue a ruling on Wednesday afternoon or of course reserve the decision and we'll have to wait. But it's, it's a nail-biting wait for Julian because of course the medical evidence accepted by the British courts that if he's extradited to the United States the oppressive prison conditions that he'll face together with the mental health picture of his depressive illness and his autistic diagno diagnosis means that he will be oh. to commit suicide because of those prison conditions. And so for him, it's a very serious situation. When his wife talks about it being his life at risk, she's not exaggerating. When's the last time someone saw, whether it was legal counsel or his wife, saw Julian? And what kind of shape was he in? He's incredibly unwell. Uh, Stella's visited with him this week. I've been on the phone to him regularly and I've seen him in recent times. He's incredibly unwell. He had a terrible illness over Christmas. He cracked a rib. He's been coughing so much. But, of course, the mental strain of staring down the barrel of a potential extradition to the United States and it being so soon, especially so soon, is, is, is a terrifying prospect for anyone. And, of course, he takes heart from the political support we're seeing, increasing political support we're seeing in Australia, and we're grateful to the Prime Minister and the Parliament for passing that resolution calling on the US and UK to drop the case and allow him to come home. And, and for us, that would be the best of all outcomes, to see Julian be able to return home to Australia and be there with his family. We have seen some diplomatic pressure, even from the Prime Minister, Anthony Albanese, but has it been enough? And is it time for that to be stepped up? What would that look like in your view? We are grateful to the Prime Minister for taking the principled leadership position that he has, uh, that this has gone on too long. Mm. Uh, this, he confirmed publicly that he's been raising it with the president, with President Biden. We continue to try to work with the Australian government to get a resolution. And the question is what the US is going to do with it. The Australian government has made that position clear. The parliament has now made that position clear. We continue to ask for yeah. ways to be resolved. And the question is what more will it take? And what does the special relationship between Australia and the US mean if we can't ask for this Australian citizen to be released? Yeah, it's a presidential election year in the United States. I imagine uh, looking at this uh, as I am uh, now that perhaps Julian Assange's best chance is a, is a pardon from uh, President Biden. Look, we've sought a pardon in the past. We sought a pardon from President Trump on his way out last time. We have do everything we can to seek a pardon again. This case should never have been brought. It, it places a huge, it places all free speech at risk. This is criminalising public interest journalism. It's why the New York Times, the Washington Post are out against this saying that this, this case should not progress. Yeah. Uh, this is an Australian citizen with his government behind him. It's time for him to be released. This case should never have been brought and it's time for the Biden administration to drop it. Yeah, and just a reminder that Chelsea Manning indeed was granted that uh, pardon years and years ago, but Julian Assange has been left to language. Just finally, before I let you go, uh, Jen, um, we all remember Julian Assange. He was so defiant as he uh, gave those speeches outside the Ecuadorian embassy. Have you, as you've spoken to him on the phone and as Stella has gone in to, to see him in the last couple of weeks... Is he still of that 
you know, sound mind? Does he still have that uh, defiant attitude or have the years in prison, his poor health just diminished that? I mean, Julian is not the same person as he was years ago. It has been heartbreaking for his family and for us as his legal team to watch his decline because of this ongoing, the ongoing pressure of this case, the, the ten detention conditions in this country and the prospect of what he might face. He is really struggling as I don't think anyone can really imagine what it's like to be in his position and the prospect of what extradition to the US means for him. So. You know, we really need to bring this to an end. I want to get him out of prison and we need the Australian government's help and to put pressure on the US government to make that possible. All right, we'll ask the questions as best we can here in Australia. Jennifer Robinson, thanks so much for your time. A big few days ahead. Thank you, Laura.